It's time for a new run of Patreon-sponsored episodes, and to kick things off, supporter Christopher Farris wanted to hear about the role human beings have had to play in the Transformers War. Humans have been an intrinsic part of Transformers stories since the very beginning of the franchise, typically serving as point-of-view characters for the audience of kids at home to identify with. As the Autobots have fought to defend Earth and humanity against the Decepticons, humans have in turn befriended the Autobots, teaching them about Earth, helping to keep them hidden from other humans, and in a few rare cases, even romancing them. But there have also been human villains who seek to destroy the Transformers or exploit them for their own gain, with some even allying themselves with the Decepticons. The very first recurring human characters in the Transformers franchise were the Witwicky family, who featured in both the Marvel comic and the animated series as the Autobots' original human allies. The Witwickys have a long and detailed history that I'll cover in a Basics episode of their own in the future, but their differing portrayals in the comic and the cartoon were illustrative of the different ways the two series handled humans in general. In the Marvel comic, young Buster Witwicky discovered the wounded Bumblebee during a battle between the Autobots and Decepticons at a drive-in movie theatre, and brought the little Autobot to his family's auto shop, where his father, mechanic Sparkplug Witwicky, repaired him. Fearing for his son's safety, Sparkplug tried to keep Buster from associating with the Autobots, but Buster would find himself repeatedly pulled into their war, once even becoming host to the energy of the Matrix. This fear and mistrust was how humanity at large reacted to the Autobots in the comic. The Autobots generally tried to keep their operations on Earth covert, associating with only select human allies, meaning that other humans who encountered the Autobots usually didn't understand at first that there was even a difference between them and the Decepticons. Comic writer Bob Budiansky considered human Transformer interaction his favourite aspect of the series, reasoning that there was no point in having robots come to Earth and turn into human vehicles if they weren't going to interact with humans. Budiansky included a prominent human character in virtually every issue he wrote, some of the most notable of whom included Buster's girlfriend, Jessie, and his best friend, O, the Autobots industrialist ally, GB Blackrock, Circuit Scrambling Robot Hating Supervillain Circuit Breaker, Walter Barnett, Head of the Government's Anti-Robot Task Force, and unfortunate comic book writer Donny Finkelberg. British writer Simon Furman wasn't so reliant on human characters for his stories, but he still created several of his own, including Professor Morris, pilot of the mechanoid Centurion, reporter Joy Meadows, and the superhero team The Neo Knights. Conversely, in the cartoon and its various sequel series, the Autobots were popular public figures who worked in open cooperation with humankind, eventually helping them expand into space as part of a galactic alliance for peace. Here, the Witwickys, Sparkplug and his son Spike, were trusted friends of the Autobots, who they met when Optimus Prime saved their lives during a Decepticon attack on the oil rig on which they were working. Sparkplug often helped repair damaged Autobots, while Spike became close friends with Bumblebee and even enjoyed a few spotlight adventures of his own, like the time his mind was transferred into the Frankenstein-like body of Autobot X, before growing up to become Earth's ambassador to the universe. The cartoon lacked the comic's inherent conflict between humans and Transformers, and as such it relied much less on guest human characters. But memorable ones included Carly, Spike's MIT graduate girlfriend and later wife with whom he had a son, Daniel, Spike's best friend, computer genius Chip Chase, evil cyborg scientist Dr. Archiville, greedy businessman Sean Berger, big game hunter Lord Chumley, and Earth Defense Command Captain Marissa Fairborn. Humans were granted a way to take their partnerships with the Transformers to the next level in 1987, when the Transformers toy line debuted Master Technology. This technology, which was incorporated into both the comic and the cartoon, allowed humans, including Spike and Daniel, to transform into heads, weapons, and more for the Transformers and fight alongside them like never before. The 1988 toy line then introduced Pretenders, Transformers who could disguise themselves as human beings. Check out the individual episodes on these different topics for more details. 
Human beings have had a role to play in virtually every Transformers series since the original. The notable exceptions were the Beast Era cartoons of the 1990s, which were set exclusively in other time periods and on other planets. Though even 1996's Beast Wars, set on prehistoric Earth, featured a pair of cavemen named Chuck and Una. Series with significant or unusual human presence have included the 1988 anime Super God Master Force, the cast of which was made up mostly of humans who used master technology to actually turn themselves into Transformers. 1989's Transformers Victory, which saw Autobot leader Star Saber adopt orphaned human Jan Minakaze as his son. The Unicron Trilogy of the early 2000s, which made the Autobots human allies central characters around which many significant story arcs revolved. And of course, the live-action movies, in which the humans were naturally the lead characters, portrayed as they were by actual human actors, while the Transformers were only visual effects. Almost every Transformers series of the 21st century has begun with a setup similar to the original Marvel comic, the Autobots operating in secret on Earth with only a small group of humans as their close allies. There have been various reasons for these humans to be involved with the Autobots. Some, like Jack Darby, Miko Nakadai, and Raph Esquivel, or father and son Denny and Russell Clay, simply found themselves in the middle of an Autobot Decepticon battle by being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Characters with mechanical talents like Kobe Hansen, Cade Yeager, and Charlie Watson found and repaired injured Autobots. And some were even personally victimized by the Decepticons, prompting the Autobots to come to their aid. For instance, Koji Onishi befriended the Autobots after the villains abducted his scientist father. Rad White, Carlos Lopez, and Alexis T. Dang became targets after they discovered the power-enhancing Minicons and characters like Sam Woodwicky, Verity Carlo, and others came into possession of objects and information sought by the Decepticons, requiring the Autobots to protect them. Some series have explored the idea that Transformers have been active on Earth since the ancient past and played a role in the shaping of humanity's history, from the pyramids and the moon landing to myths and legends about gods, monsters, and the lost city of Atlantis. These secret activities tend to make them targets for government organizations like Sector 7, and several series have seen the Autobots emerge from hiding to make peace with these groups and formally ally with humanity. The live-action movies placed a particularly heavy emphasis on the Autobots collaborating with Earth's military to fight the Decepticons as the Joint Strike Force NEST, a concept that would also be featured in media like IDW Publishing's comics, which saw the Autobots join forces with Special Task Force Skywatch, and Transformers Prime, in which the Autobots allied with the military via their liaison, Special Agent William Fowler. In Rescue Bots, another series with significant human involvement, the Autobots worked in direct partnership with the Emergency Services, going into action alongside Police Chief Charlie Burns and his family of first responders. Humans have also been known to fight alongside the Transformers in more unconventional ways, by bonding with them via master technology, building piloted mecha so they can fight on a Transformer scale, or using powered battle suits like the one worn by Kicker Jones. The only series of this era to not present the Autobots as initially working in secret on Earth was 2007's Transformers Animated, which instead cast them in the role of robot superheroes publicly defending 22nd century Detroit. With the help of both their civilian friends, half-human, half-Cybertronian hybrid Sari Sumdak and her roboticist father Isaac, and their ally in the police, Captain Carmine Fanzone, they often battled Detroit's human supervillains, like the acid-spewing Meltdown, the body-snatching Headmaster, and others. Animated marked the beginning of a run of human villains appearing in Transformers media to an extent not seen since Generation 1, with threats that included unscrupulous tycoons like Porter C. Powell, Dylan Gould, and Madeline Pinch, corrupt CIA operative Harold Attinger, high-tech hunter Quint Quarry, and those seeking Cybertronian technology for their own evil ends, like Silas, leader of the terrorist organization Mech, and the immortal mad scientist Thaddeus Morocco. 
Sadly, human collaboration doesn't always work out in the Autobots' favour. The destruction the Transformers War brings to Earth has been known to lead to the breakdown of their alliances, forcing them back into hiding while their former human allies turn on them and hunt them down. Fortunately though, some greater evil will usually come along that will make humanity see sense and join forces with the Autobots once more. And of course, all this is without mentioning the various crossovers that there have been with properties like G.I. Joe, Mask, Star Trek, and more, which almost always begin with a misunderstanding that pits human and Transformer against one another before they team up to fight the real enemy. Toys of human characters have been fairly rare for most of the brand's history, with little more than a handful of unposable PVC figurines released in its first 25 years. But they underwent a surge in popularity thanks to the live-action film series, with numerous characters being released in the movie's tie-in Human Alliance line, packaged with Transformers figures they could ride. Since then, toy lines like Transformers Masterpiece, Prime, GT, the Creo Building Block range, and more have made figures of both new and classic human characters a more common occurrence. Recently though, the presence of humans in Transformers media has dropped off. Though set on Earth, the current cartoon, Transformers Cyberverse, has no regular human characters, while IDW's current comic is set wholly on Cybertron and lacks humans entirely. Humans have always been polarizing figures in Transformers stories, with some fans sharing Bob Budiansky's love of the storytelling potential they embody, and others being loudly opposed to including them in any way. But as long as Cybertronians continue to visit our planet and turn into our vehicles, fleshlings like us will never stop being a part of the world of the Transformers. And those are the basics on humans in Transformers. Leave a comment below about some of your favourite human characters from Transformers history. Don't forget to like, subscribe and click the bell to be notified about future episodes. And consider supporting the series on Patreon for the opportunity to sponsor an episode of your own.